previously on STAT 201. Hey, Brian, what's up? Hey, Adam. Oh, what's this? Adam, what are you doing? Adam! No! Hey everyone, Jason here. Uh, we've tried to find someone to do the Kahoot. Uh, you know what though? We could just try and bring him back. I happen to have this. So uh, let's see what happens. Hey, I've been gone so long that my hair got long. There we go, we're back. How is everyone doing? Should the music playing through? We do, and of course we're going to disco music. Oh, my portal's still going. Let me turn off the portal. There we go, the portal's gone. How's everyone doing? The Kahoot code is posted on the online resources. So, <laughs> it's one of these days the mullet will appear. We gotta, we gotta have the Joker appear first. <laughs> oh, we need Cap. Let's get, let's get the disco music going. I used to do different ones, but the disco one is the absolute best. It's even got like surround sound. If we, we could get Kahoot bombed. Should we chance it? How many people do we have watching right now? Let me look at who we got watching. How many people got in this Kahoot? We got 122 watching. Okay, we're gonna chance it. Let's chance it. Let's bring down the YouTube tomorrow. Let's show what the code is. Let's do this. There's the code right there. We're taking a chance. That's what we do. We didn't put we didn't put Kahoot in the title. So let's just put the code right out there. Join up. Load up the Marvel again. Bring down the Marvel. UT Marvel. UT Marvel, not UT Marvel. Look at this graph. It should say look at this code. I know, no no Kahoot bombers. No Kahoot bombers. We'll have to reset it and we'll have to put the code. But look at that. Look at the Kahoot grow. Look at the Kahoot grow. I think we're doing all right. Don't bomb the Kahoot, because then that's no fun. Then we just got to review him. What fun is reviewing? A lot more fun when we can have fun here. I'm bringing the code down. Okay. Looking to be good. We're going to start here in about three minutes. It's like we're at the roller rink. It's like, hey, everybody, welcome to the roller rink. It's the couple's roller skate. If you're a couple, join and roller skate. <laughs> Open your gift to Pokemon Go. I should do it. What's, what's your Pokemon Go, Go name again? Remind me. I've been playing some again lately. I need to go on more walks. I used to walk about 70K a week. Now I walk like 6K a week. You were a DJ at a roller rink? That is, <laughs> that's so awesome, Shelby. It's like, okay, now it is parents. Parents, if you're a parent. Only parents. You know there's some <laughs> true gamer right here? Yes. I've been playing more uh, some Isaac. You guys know Isaac. We got the code right here. We're just doing that. Getting everyone in on the code. There's the code right there. Join up. It is Stat 201. If you're in Stat 201, come out to the roller rink. You know what's a really good game at the roller rink? They used to have the Simpsons game. It had four controllers. And they had other games like the X-Men game. I'm old right here. Well, thank you so much, Payne, right there. Good to see you here, Payne. <laughs> He's cracking me up in the chat. You're welcome. We're gonna have some fun. We're gonna Kahoot. We're gonna review. We're gonna Kahoot. Good. Just give it, we're just trying something crazy. Your phone is faster. We're gonna start here in two minutes. Two minute countdown. Wait, here we go, wait. Start a countdown for two minutes. It's official, two minute countdown is going. You can't see it, but two minute countdown's going. I'm glad to hear that, Cole. We got some great re review tonight. This is one of our biggest cahoots ever. I'm in Hodges together to win this. Yes, Joshua and Clay are going to win this. My man. My man. You know what we're talking about right there, Payne? Some some Rick and Morty. Some uh, over 9,000 IQ going on. What was that an iPhone for? <laughs> Dude, I got out of, I got out of uh, a test one time, and one of my students worked at the... Um, Apple store. He said, Brian, what the heck is your phone? 
and I was like, it's an SE. It's an iPhone SE. Now the SE2 is out and everyone knows about the SE again. Everyone's like, oh, I know what it is. We need to update the phone. <laughs> I do. It's very small, very compact. It's Tiny Brian uses it for those who know. Tiny Brian. Sounds even weirder today. We're doing Mega Voice today. I don't know. It's, it's just these things. Who knows what's going on? Exam is 6 p.m. till midnight tomorrow. If you have issues, please let us know. We do makeups in the morning. If there's a big issue, let us know. And there's conference and makeup at the end of the semester. We are connected on LinkedIn. That's awesome. Anyone's free to add me. <laughs> be nice to everybody. Um, so we're just going to hide that. But be nice to everybody. Uh, we, once again, uh, make sure to promote positivity here. Sorry for me telling anyone's joking or not joking. Um, but <laughs> what was I going to say? I don't know. We're here to have fun and do some learning. Uh, please tell us if there's a big issue and you're free to add me on LinkedIn. Definitely add me on LinkedIn. Um, just Vols help Vols. That's what we do. Oh, we don't have errors on. I might have made an error there. Who knows? Let's put on the errors. We got quotes. Mubot's here. Everyone's here. Mubot has made zero errors. Legend Giraffe is going to win this. And guess what? It's about up. You will be you will be doing it on your phone. You'll go to, you'll go to kahoot.it. 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 We're starting in literally 10 seconds. Eight. Seven. Six. My phone's going crazy. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Zero. Phone's still going off. Okay, I'm locking it. Join quick. Join quick. Oh, that's it. We're locked. We're locked. We're good. No one can crash our game now. The game is in. The game is good. We're so we're happy with the grand exam. We're allowed to take the... Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> you only get one exam. You only get one exam. And there's only one Kahoot. Let's get started with this Kahoot. Here we go. Let's do it. I'll move out of the way if I'm blocking any questions. Quiz question one. Which of the following phrases helps us identify quantitative variables? So quantitative variables are actual real numbers. You can ask questions like, how many slices of pizza did you eat? Everyone's answering. She so asks questions, how many cookout burgers did you order? Most of my questions deal with food. How many video games do you own? How many years old are you? Although you could ask someone, what is your age? A question like, how many is a good way to talk about quantitative variables. So a quantitative variable is going to be How much? And I'm hope, nice job, amazing work. Man, just total wow right there. Really good answers. Um, we should mention this, that quantitative variables have two types. There's two types of quantitatives. Does anyone know the two types of quantitative variables? We need the, wow. <laughs> Does anyone know the two types of quantitative variables? The two types of quantitative variables. I love all the people in the chat, great stuff. The two types of quantitative variables. Uh, ordinal and nominal are the two categoricals. Good job, Whitson, right there. Univariate and bivariate are the ways, like two variables, one variables. Um, it would be, we don't mention this much. Take a decent note if you want. There's continuous, which means it can be, boom, Brennan right there, continuous and discrete. Continuous means it can be a number like, think about this. Uh, how many slices did you eat? How many slices of pizza did you eat last night? It's a tongue twister. Maybe if you say two and a half, someone would know what you mean because it's a continuous number. But what if you said, I own two and a half cats? Uh, sounds a little bit odd right there. If you say, I own two and a half cats, then that'd be a little bit odd. We're going to stop the timer right there. Does that make sense right there? That a question is either continuous or discrete. That continuous numbers can be decimals and discrete would be whole numbers. Does everyone have that right there? A continuous number would be like, how many slices of pizza did you eat? 2.5. But then how many cats do you own would be something that would be discrete where it's whole numbers. And so I think we've got this good stuff right here. Let's continue on with the next question here. Dr. Unicorn. Well, Unicorn, that's a doctor is of course going to win, but I am voting on, I like silly alpaca, silly alpaca. Let's have you win right here. Silly alpaca. The University of Tennessee uses student ID numbers, example 239, to track you in databases. What type of variable is this? 
So this is student number. Student number. What kind of variable is this? Now there's only really three types of main variable types in this class. We talk about categorical, quantitative, and identifier. And so categorical, quantitative, and identifier, and you have to think about what each one does. And I think many people are gonna know that I accidentally said student ID number. <laughs> I took that out of it on purpose. Student ID number, and it'd be identifier. So what should we know about identifiers? Identifiers are this. Identifiers must be this. What must an identifier be? An identifier must be this for every observation. This is like a keynote, boom, Samantha right there, 100 points. They're unique, everyone's saying they're unique. Great answers in the chat right there. 100 points, all the people answering. You know what, you send me those points, great job. Non-repeating, it's not that they don't repeat and great answers, it's that they can never repeat. An identifier is structurally unique for every single observation. So something is an identifier when it cannot, will not ever, 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 ever repeat. So no, Bradley. You'll get it next time. Make sure to be very careful while clicking in. And let's do this. Let's see, did silly alpaca? An, an area code is probably more a categorical variable, GG. Great question right there. It, an area code is more of a categorical variable. Um, <laughs> you might be Alexander. An identify, I mean, excuse me, area code is more of a categorical variable because it's what people are in this area code or what is your area code? Does everyone understand we'd say to someone, what is your area code? Not how much is your area code and area codes are not unique for multiple people. Phone number can maybe be an identifier, but it might be a group of people who have the same phone number. So this right here would probably phone number would be a group. Like if people share a phone number, then it'd be the people who have that phone number. Um, it just depends sometimes. Most identifiers would be things like your driver's license numbers. Those things are most often what we consider identifiers or like Amazon order number, or if you're looking other things like that, Nathan's right, right there. All those things would be identifiers, app ID in an Apple store. These things that cannot, will not ever not repeat. Great job. Let's do this. Let's go to the next one right here. Silly alpaca, <gasps> hanging in there, hanging in there, but fuzzy newt. And fast wombat, I'm sorry, purple hamster? Okay, purple hamster. If you're a purple hamster out there, I want you to win. Purple hamster, you've got my vote of confidence for this. Let's do this on the next question. Which of the following phrases helps us identify identifier variables? Eh, it's kind of a repeat. Just making sure you know that identifiers do a certain thing right here. A little bit of a repeat, but what would identifiers do? Would it tell us how much something is, like a quantity? Would it tell us how long something is, like a time variable? Would it tell us the group something is in? Almost like we're making saying like, we're putting things into categories maybe with which group or what group is something in, like a category. Identifiers are only gonna point to just one row in the data. So, oh no, I'm sorry, William. Good job, everybody. Remember, if you don't win, there's only gonna be three winners on the Kahoot. Don't worry if you don't win. You're here to learn, have your notebook out and be taking notes. And so make sure to follow along with notes. The questions are gonna get a little bit more difficult and I am gonna start drawing things and explaining things. So have your notebook out and be taking notes and ask questions between the questions. But we're gonna see who's in the lead right now. Oh my, purple hamster got my vote of confidence. Um, go to, there's a live button. Make sure you're currently watching live or reload the page. Make sure you're currently, yes, Samantha's right. We're all winners, but purple, purple hamster, purple hamster, you got this. Look, my vote of confidence, we'll, we'll test it out right here. We're going to see you with fast wombat, fast wombat. You have my vote of confidence with question number four. Let's do this. Which of the following graphics can be used for univariate categorical? So which of these can be used for univariate categorical? And I have a favorite saying for this. So if you remember my favorite saying about something, 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 that's the ones that can be used for univariate categorical. So you wanna ask yourselves, what could be displayed in a histogram? What could be displayed in a box plot? What could be displayed in a pie chart? What could be displayed in a bar chart? And someone's saying apple, made for apple pies. But what if you said barcade? Maybe you could make a pie chart of your favorite bars or a bar chart of your favorite pies. Now we did trick a few people here, so I'm gonna pull up the notes really quick. Two seconds, let's get the notes going. These are notes from class right here. So when we think about this, boom, Samantha right there. These displays, let's write them down really quick. Univariate categorical, here let's take some really quick notes, you ready? Univariate categorical. 
univariate categorical are pie charts, bar charts, Pareto plots, ring charts, but no one likes ring charts, and you can do uh, pivot charts. So these are all these right here. These are univariate categorical uh, pie charts look like ah, the computer's on it. The pie charts look like the following. You just have a pie. And remember, you can make a bar chart your favorite pies or a pie chart your favorite bars. Marshall Erickson said that, How I Met Your Mother. A Pareto is a bar chart that's been put in order. A ring chart's just like a pie chart with the center out of it. And then just pivot charts can do all different types of things. Pivot charts cannot really display or shouldn't display uh, identifiers though. What up? Oh my gosh, Steven, for the win right there. Frequency tables, relative frequency tables. I think I covered that in the video, right? I do want to mention there are tons of videos up. I made a new playlist where I review all the chapters. Uh, so the frequency tables and relative frequency tables are going to have the numbers in it. They just are tables with the numbers or the percentages in it. So check out those new videos. Um, you won't be using jump at all. You'll just be maybe looking at some output. So you do need to know kind of how to look at the output, but you will not, not, not be using jump. Univariate, univariate, quantitative. Univariate quantitative is going to be a histogram, a box plot, a dot plot, uh, a stem and leaf, and pivot charts. Pivot charts can do anything. So a histogram basically looks like this right here, where we have a box plot, but the number line is numeric. Um, oh, you got this. You're, you're still in it. You're going to get those big points. Here's a box plot which we'll see more on those later. Here's a dot plot, just looks like the dots are built up. A stem and leaf is gonna show us the numbers on the number line. I don't have a stem and leaf on here, sorry, I should put a stem and leaf on this practice. And then a pivot chart's gonna do the same thing. Um, <laughs> the mullet will occur. If you wanna like this video, it's much appreciated. Uh, likes help out the channel and feel free to do that. Really appreciate that. These are very similar to the test questions. I've seen the test. These are very similar. This is a really good review. I promise you that. So those we just see, saw right there, those are univariate quantitative. All of these are the univariate quantitative and these are the univariate categorical. Does that make sense? What size data, smaller data sets are better for stem and leaf. So for stem and leaf, you generally want smaller data because you'll see all the numbers. So stem and leaves are better with smaller data sets because you'll see all the numbers. A histogram box plots are fine and those go paired together. So we have univariate quantitative, one variable quantitative, one variable categorical right here. Feel free to pause the video. It's time for that next question. Let's find out who's gonna win here. Purple Amster, no! Why? Why? Purple Hamster. I want to see Purple Hamster back on the leaderboard before it starts back up again. Purple Hamster. Let's do this. Let's do the next question. Even Mubot's sad. Which of the following graphs can be used for bivariate categorical? Bivariate categorical. Bivariate categorical. That means two categorical variables. So we're reviewing displays of data right here. We need to know which ones go with uh, univariate, bivariate. And all of these are bivariate displays of data. Every single thing here is a bivariate display. But two of them are basically like each other and the other two are paired together. And I will tell you the story behind these in seven seconds. So if you know that a time plot is a special case scatter plot, you'll know that both of those display quantitative quantitative. So what is the condition that we use when we have scatter plots? Who can put the first two letters for scatter plot condition to use a scatter plot Scatter plots are this, this. Like you should know instantaneously. No, Bradley, QQ, straight enough. No outliers because plot doesn't thicken. Not because, but the QQ, this is two quantitative variables right here. And time plots are special case scatter plots. So when you look at uh, scatter plots, they're bivariate quantitative and time plots are bivariate quantitative special case scatter plots. So good notes to take. Nice job, Victoria, right there. Great comments. And here we'll put some more notes right here. We'll go to the next page and we have bivariate categorical and bivariate categorical can we oh we'll get some mega monday here um bivariate categorical will be mosaic plot and contingency table i don't know how to spell sure thank you word contingency table and uh, sure why not seg 
minted slash stacked bar charts. I go in that in the video. I hate those though. Bivariate quantitative, and I'll draw some of these in a moment. Scatter plot, and then time plots. Uh, X axis is time, has a time variable, is time variable. Like weeks, days, months, years, something like that. Uh, bivariate, so I can't spell. Bivariate quantitative slash categorical. And let's go here to go to stacked histograms. Oh, nice job right there, Ricky. And side by side box plots. People remember better than I do sometimes. I don't really use many side by side uh, pie charts, but that is an amazing answer right there. So these are kind of your quick notes. And we can, can we get it all on one page? We can. Oh, no, wait, wait. And then there we go. We have to go smaller because we need to go here and do side side by side pie charts. I will say this, these are the main ones I would concern myself with right there. Um, so those are the main ones, the mosaic plot and the contingency table. The mosaic plot is going to show you a lot of different things. I think I have some questions coming up on it, but the mosaic plot looks at the distribution and then the contingency table gives you the numbers inside of it. So the contingency table gives you the numbers inside of it. Oh, some GG's right there, some good games. Um, <laughs> I really appreciate all the positivity, but you know what I'd really like? I'd like to see Purple Hamster back on that leaderboard because who wouldn't want a Purple Hamster? Fast Wombat's back. I'll take that. I'm happy here with Fast Wombat. And Shining Penguin? Shining Penguin sounds pretty awesome. Shining Penguin, you're my new favorite. Let's win it for Shining Penguin. Question number six. Oh my gosh. Find the IQR of this distribution. Now the IQR represents the middle 50%. So what is the IQR? To understand what the IQR is, we have to know the parts of a box plot. We're going to have more box plot, box plot questions coming up here in a moment. But we should know that this is the maximum. Hint for later questions. This is the maximum. The range of this distribution would go from 0 to 8. So the range of this is 8. This is not the maximum. The lower is the min. And that's also where Q1 is. That's Q3. The IQR is 2. Great work there. Please be able to identify the parts of a box plot. What is weird about this box plot? Who in the comments right now can tell me what's weird about this box plot right here? What's weird about this? Like when you notice this, you're like, wait a minute. Shouldn't there be one of these? There's no whisker. Yeah, there's no whisker. And where is the whisker? So, and we don't really see the fences. The fences are something we erase. The fences are kind of like a hidden magical thing that's barely here. And so there's no whisker, which means that this is the minimum and it's Q1. So you can't have negative pets. Exactly. This is a question. How many pets do you own that was given to UT students? And most or a lot of students, at least 25% of students said zero, that they own zero pets. And then 50% of students or less said they own one or less pets or one or more pets. And then 75% of students, do you know, so I'm here at this line, because from here to here is 25 to 75%. This is the IQR. Does that make sense? <laughs> so we have right here, this is the 25th percentile, but also the minimum. Does that make sense? It's a little bit weird of a box plot that there is no whisker. So the minimum and the 25th percentile is zero. To think about what this might look like if you had data. So let's look at what the data might look like. The data points might look like something like this right here. If you ask students how many pets they own, does everyone see that if we were to go through this, that the 25th percentile, let's just pretend it's here. This is the 25th percentile, just pretending. Might be kind of close to it. And is that the median? Let's see here, how many numbers do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 numbers. So the eighth number should be the median, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh my gosh, that is the median. And it looks like between here and here is the 25th percentile then. So the 25th percentile would still be zero because we would average those together. And this is the median. You will not have to find Q1 or Q3 on the test. This is gonna be the maximum right here. I think I've done this all properly. And once again, you will not find Q1 or Q3, but this is what this box probably would be. Now, a really quick drawing of this box plot right here. It's going to be a weird one. So we would have here that the minimum value is zero. 
the median is zero and the Q1 is zero. And then we have here Q3 is going to be two. And then we would go up 1.5 IQR. So here's something I wanna make sure you know, that this whisker right here is 1.5 IQRs above Q3. Can anyone tell me, excuse me, not whisker, but fence. Can anyone tell me where this magical fence will go to, this fence that we will erase here when we draw it? Can anyone tell me where this fence would go to? The fence is where outliers begin. It would be where? So here's the hints. We'd be here at zero, and here's two. It'd be at five, that's correct, because we're going 1.5 IQRs above. Does that make sense? You would plug into here what the IQR is, and the IQR is two. So since the IQR is two, you're going three above this. This is plus three now. So this is where five would begin, and so the whisker would go up to four, it wouldn't go to five, and then you'd have an outlier here all the way at eight. Does this make sense how I've drawn this box plot out right here? Does, did people kind of follow along that these whiskers are 1.5 IQRs? The 1.5 is just the mathematics, and here I'll write that for you. The, the fences go as high as 1.5 IQRs above Q1, or below Q3. So they'll go above Q1 this distance, up to that distance above, or they'll go up to this distance below. So you will either add or subtract 1.5 IQRs to where your fences will be. Uh, you won't have to draw a box plot on the test. You may have to possibly know the whole 1.5 thing. That's about as far as we go on it. So knowing the 1.5 above Q3 or 1.5 below, and just think you're just finding out the, the point at which the outliers would begin. Does that make sense? I have a really good video reviewing this under the speed run videos, and it's like a seven minute video and I do a whole box plot from scratch and talk about all the concepts. So that is the box plot review. We're gonna do multiple box plots coming here soon. Purple hamster, please. Agile zebra, agile zebra. Wait, did we lose? Oh, we still have shining penguin. Okay, good. Let's find out who's gonna win. No, it's all right that we got dislike. Let's go to the next question. Who's gonna win right here? Probably another 40 minutes or so, 30, 40 minutes. The group of individuals are things we want to understand. The group of individuals are things we want to understand. That is correct, Samantha. Amazing note, Samantha. 100 points right there. That is 100% correct. The group of individuals are things we want to understand. It's also called the this of interest. It's the something of interest. It's the thing we want to understand. Not the thing we want to understand about them, but the thing, the group we want to understand. So some keywords and I'll define them all for you all for you right here. So what we have right here is we have the population. So if you people were tricked on the sample, the sample is what you get data on. So the sample is what you collect to understand the population. So the sample is the insight into our population. Does that make sense? The sample is the insight into our population. And then what do we get from a sample? Take this note, SSPP. What does this mean? Sample statistics, population parameters. The, the population thing could possibly be on the test. I looked at the test, given some hints here and things that you might need to understand. These are in the notes, it's in chapter one notes. But when you think about this, samples give statistics. So when somebody looks at maybe a poll, are they getting a, are they taking a population if they take a poll of people? If you take a poll, would that be a would that be a population you've taken or a sample you've taken? If you take a poll, so you go out and poll some individuals, is that a sample or a population? If you go out and take a poll, oh, that's all right, right there. There, don't worry. F is classic. Pay F for respect. Don't worry about that, right there. That's classic, right there. I think there was a misclick. Sorry about that. So, would a sample be a would a sample come from a poll or would that be? Oh, no worries, no worries. I don't think I can, sorry if you're the individual. So, oh, you are correct, Alexander. A sample would come from a poll. Does that make sense? If we take a poll, we'd have a sample. And then when you think about it, it's to understand the population. Just think about presidential polls. We presidential election coming up, real world events. They take polls so they can understand what happens in the election. And the election is the population of interest. So when they take polls, what do they get from the polls? When you take a poll, you would get a what 
for the amount of people that are going to vote for a candidate. You would get, and do register to vote, definitely register to vote. When you take a poll, your sample would give you a what for the people that are going to vote. It'd give you insight. What would it give you? The sample would give you a statistic. It would give you a statistic. So the sample would give you a statistic. And then it would let you understand the population. And your goal for the population would be the parameter. Does that make sense? So the parameter is what we want to understand. The parameter would be who votes for candidate blank on election day. That's when election day happens, you'd get a parameter from the population. Does that make sense? When election day happens, you would see the population and it would give you a parameter. When you go out and poll people, you would get a sample and you'd have a statistic, which is an estimate. There we go. Don't worry about it. Next question. Oh my gosh. Dr. Unicorn's back right here. Just total amazingness. Let's do this. Next question. Here we go. Which variable do we never make graphics of? 20 second question. We should know we don't make graphics of this. I meant to put 30 seconds. We don't make graphics of this. We don't make graphics of this one. Don't make graphics of this. We don't make graphics of this one. Which one is it? Boom, identifiers. Great job. Now, what are what's discrete again? I put discrete on here for a reason. Can anyone explain what discrete is again? Because discrete is a type of this. Discrete is a type of this. So great job. Uh, great job, D, right there. Excellent work. No decimals. That's what discrete means. And if you want to think of a discrete question, how many pizzas did you order? Oh, man. I used to do this thing first day of class where I'd call up Domino's and I'd ask to get 2.3 pizzas. And then they would always hang up on me or sometimes they'd laugh. And then I would talk about how you can't order a continuous amount of pizzas. You can only order discrete amounts of pizza. And yeah, now, you know, uh, current world events. But anyways, we'll be doing that again one day. We'll be calling up Domino's. I could call them up on stream. Hey, we should do that. We might order someone a pizza one day. I'll look into it because, you know, we're just having tons of fun. And I really appreciate that. I could always make that call right now. <laughs> I need someone to like cook out. Oh, dude. You see, if you ask for two and a half burgers, they might actually do it. You'd get someone cool on the phone. They go, you want two and a half burgers? Okay, we'll cut a burger in half. So um, usually when you order pizza, you order a discrete amount of pizza. Does this make sense what discrete is? That is correct, Nikki. You are correct. About four, 45 questions, 90 minutes, two minutes a question. There are questions similar to these where if you know it, you just like got it. So if you order pizza, you'd have a discrete amount of pizza. If you order hot dogs, usually a discrete amount of hot dogs. But you know who's in the lead right now? And this is insanity. This this purple Purple hamster's back. I about lost it right there. I saw it. Purple hamster. You got this. You can beat Fuzzy Newt and Mystery Macaw. Let's do this. Purple hamster's back, everyone. <laughs> Time plots are special case. Tiny Brian will return. He'll be back at the end of this. He'll congratulate the winners, maybe. Tiny Brian will be here for the for the finals. Time plots are special case what? Now, if you've taken 320, which I know one person in the chat has, this actually has an indicator variable on it. So we're actually doing indicator regression right here with uh, multivariate. Pretty fun stuff. But time plots are special case this. It's not that there's dots there. Time plots are special case. I always get so afraid I've selected the wrong question, but I think people know time plots are special case scatter plots. So what, what makes it a time plot? I think here, I'll put Mega Mondays back on. What makes it a time plot? When is something a time plot? Bingo, Alexander right there. All the x-axis has time on it. So if we see on here something like price of milk, milk price, price of milk over time, this is a time plot right here because time is on the x-axis. Why is this a scatter plot? Why is this a scatter plot? Why in the world is this a scatter plot? And thank you so much, everyone, for playing tonight. Really great stuff right here. If it helps you, tell people, man, that Kahoot helped me. Both are quantitative. It would make my day if, like, one of these kids who had 500 players. If we had 1,000, could you imagine that? 1,000 people playing in the Kahoot? That'd be insanity. We still have over 100, and I love it. So both the variables there are quantitative, making it a scatter plot. 
I'm glad to hear that, Gia. This is really good help. There is multiple choice on the exam, so this is really good practice uh, and great review. Th hey, Brock, that's awesome. We're here to study. We're here to work. And you know what? Purple Hamster still hanging in there. Purple Hamster just hanging in there, little guy. Classic Simpsons quotes. It was Cat, though. Does anyone else feel like you need a... Oh, no, it is. It's competitive with 100 people. It's super competitive. Next question. Which distribution has the biggest range? Be careful. Don't click in too quickly. What do we look for when we see which one has the biggest range? When we want to see which one has the biggest range, what do we have to make sure to remember? This is going to hurt. This is going to hurt a lot of people. Chat, go crazy. Chat, go crazy, because watch out. The biggest range is going to be what? Remember, I, IQR is only the range in the middle 50%. I, people are saying outliers in the chat. Oh, no. We got so many people. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Seriously, though. Seriously, though. Okay, wait, wait. Just in case you didn't catch it. there extra sad right now <laughs> sorry but what okay so one thing we should remember we should remember is that the outliers right there i promise it's viewable if you watch it again um but probably everyone was so quick that they didn't they didn't see it but some people did see it this has the biggest range because you go the max to the min um <laughs> you have advanced <laughs> so with this right here make sure so what is our big note when you look at the range always remember to include what when you look at the range always remember to include what when you look at the range of the data always remember to include what outliers outliers that's the biggest thing right here when you look at the range <laughs> always make sure to include Andrew. Make sure to include outliers. Andrew, check your points again real quick because you should have update on your status. You probably got to a new status right here. While Andrew's checking his points right here. Okay, I feel horrible now. Purple hamster's gone. I feel horrible. Andrew has made it to legendary tier. Andrew is at legendary tier. Andrew is a legend in the class. He, to he totally is. Andrew was actually part of our first class of online students we didn't even did an interview but it was because you know we were just like what do you think about it and so i actually saw i saw andrew in the uc i think he was waiting in line at panda express getting his getting his food and i was like hey andrew you want to do an interview today? he's like yeah sure cool man and i was like oh yeah cool yeah just come up with this time um <laughs> give fuzzy <laughs> fuzzy newt yeah fuzzy newt's been hanging in there this whole time versus but they're going against shiny penguin you know you know i think shiny penguin's awesome but fuzzy newt you got my vote of success. Let's see if it helps Fuzzy Nude as we get to the next question right here. Question number 11, halfway done with this Kahoot. What is the best measure of center for this distribution? So the first thing you want to do when you look at distributions is understand the shape of it. Now, when we look at the shape of this, we should immediately identify that this is extremely right skew. Right to the high, left to the low, whatever way that tail goes. So the tail of the distribution, the thinner part of it, goes to the right, right skew. That means the center of the distribution is best described by either the median or the mean, and it'll be the median. We did not trick too many people there. Great job, great review, because the median is what we use when the data is skewed. Now, if the data, what other shape do we have? We have skewed and we have what other shape? What other shape do we have? The data is either skewed like this, has outliers, and does not look this shape. Uh, no, I don't think it has short question answers. I'm pretty sure on that. It either looks skewed or normal. So if it looked normal, we would use the mean. Now, I want to make this very clear. The median and the mean are measures of center. So make sure you have a note. Let's. I'll just write it down because I know people are more likely to write things if I write them. So what you want to remember is that when you have the center of a distribution, center is either mean or median. Let's go bigger on the font. So center is either mean or median, spread is either uh, standard deviation or IQR. And just to make this very clear, the mean goes with the standard deviation and the median goes with the IQR. And if you think about this, and I mentioned this in the videos, these are for distributions 
that look normal. The mean is, if you do Mega Mondays, I'll make an A on the exams. Just for you. This is just for you right here. Some Mega Mondays right here. You get to see Mega Man rocking out. Just for you. And the standard deviations also for normal looking data. So those go together right there. Will there be any quizzes on the exam out of the, yeah, they're very, I think so. And that was a kind of our goal with the Canvas content quizzes that basically you're doing these right here. And I'm pretty sure Terry used the same sorts of things. So skewed data uses the median for center and the, the IQR for spread and normal data uses the mean for center and the standard deviation. <laughs> we'll have some more fun here on the next question, Joshua. We'll make it happen. Let's go to the next question right here and see who's in the lead. It's a tight leaderboard with Fuzzy Newt, Shiny Penguin, Shining Penguin, and Silly Alpaca from the start. Let's see here, but Winged Wallaby? <laughs> Winged Wallaby. Let's continue on. Outliers can impact the IQR or the median. Outliers can impact the IQR or the median. Let's say we take a data point and move it all the way to the far side. Like we have nine and we turn it to nine million. Do outliers impact the IQR or the median? I mean, if they impact one of them, this is a true statement. Do outliers impact the IQR or the median? The answer, and I hope, I'm always worried I put in wrong answers on these because I've done it before because I'll select the wrong thing. The answer is most definitely false. Oh, no. What two things will the outliers impact? Outliers will impact what? And let's, here, let's do an example here. We pause on the ones where people get wrong. So if you think about outliers down here, if we have something like, let's make a very small data set. I like doing this example where we have a company and people at the company make uh, this amount of money. So this is your hourly wage at a company. What is the current, let's do it this way. Oh, this is so mean. <laughs> Somebody's doing free labor, they're the intern. It, it won't, uh, if there's one outlier, it won't impact it because watch this right here. So do you see the median right here? Does everyone agree that this is the median. What is the mean of this data set right now? What is the mean of this data set? To take the mean, you add up all the numbers and divide by how many there are. So to find out the mean, you go zero plus 50 plus 100 divided by three. Does that make sense? That with these three numbers, the mean of these three numbers is 50. What is the median of these three numbers? It's 50 because 50 is the middle number. To find the median, put them in order. And if there is a middle number, it's the middle number. If there's no middle number, you would average them. So let's say we had this data set here now. The median in this data set, since there is no middle number, would be the average of these two. And you need to put them in order. So once again, I have the same sort of 0 plus 40 plus 60 plus 100 divided by 4. So this is going to be the mean of this new distribution. But let's say this person who's making $100 an hour now makes $1,000 an hour. What is the new median of this distribution. What is the new median of this distribution? The new median would be what? It would still be 50. How about, how about this? What's the new median now? Does everyone see because the median and IQR are based on positions and the IQR works the same way that if the spread of the middle 50% goes from here to here, that's a horrible drawing of it. If the spread of the middle 50% goes from somewhere from here to here, and we have an outlier and we move the outlier over further, then it won't impact the middle 50%. So both the IQR and the median are not impacted directly by outliers. What would be impacted by outliers? What two measures will be impacted by outliers? What two measures of center and spread would be impacted by outliers? The mean and the standard deviation, exactly. And the range too, great job there, Brock. The range too, we don't talk about the range that much just because it's so impacted by outliers. But the mean, the standard deviation, and the range are all impacted by outliers. The median and the IQR are not impacted by outliers. And so if you see here, hopefully the color coding helps a little bit. We tricked a lot of people on that question. Take a good note. IQR and median are not impacted by outliers. And standard deviation, mean, and range are impacted by outliers. And continuing on. Shakeup of the leaderboard with Silly Alpaca jumping into the lead right here. Let's do this next question. What is the Q3 for this data? <laughs> Good luck there, pain. Q3 for this data is going to be what? Where's Q3 at? I see a bunch of different points in here. I see eight, I see five, I see two, I see one, I see zero. That's actually the mean. 
And you can tell that this is right skewed because the mean is higher than the median. Oh, that's the median. So the median is the 50th percentile, so it's got to be up here. That can't be the 75th percentile, which is what Q3 represents. Is 75% of the data we've gone through. How many people did we trick? Not many. Uh, Q3 is the upper edge of the box plot. So the lower edge right here is Q1 and Q3 is right here. You're fine, Alexander. It's good review. It's good practice. Uh, <laughs> so um, I think that pretty much does it for this question because hopefully we're understanding box plots, but we got some more coming up. We're about to do normal curve stuff. I think normal curve is coming up next. So get ready. If you want to review normal curve, so just get ready, get your, does everyone have a piece of paper out? Grab a piece of paper really quick if you don't have it. You can solve these without pieces of paper, but it can help. So Mega Mondays, let's do this. Press F for respect in the chat for the leaderboard. No one fell off the leaderboard. No one fell off the leaderboard. That's like, that's like amazing right there. I'm just typing amazing in the chat. I don't know what I'm doing. Let's do this for the next one. Here we go. What is the equation for a residual? Oh no, no, no. What is the equation for a residual? I have it written here two ways. And if you know my favorite way of saying it, and I also showed a graphic with it to show you how the residual is calculated. I know we've got a lot of smart people in here and we still got review. So if you know my favorite way of saying what a residual is to memorize it, it's like, wicka, 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 wicka. I don't know. I don't know how to, I don't know how to rap because the answer is residual wrap because residual is equal to actual minus predicted. So residual is the actual minus the predicted drop a beat. I wish I could, I wish I could. I've got those. Did anyone see my epic stat tool one speed runs? Oh no, I spent so long. <laughs> Hopefully you guys like that. So it's, it's epic rap bells. If no one knows the reference, Calzone saw it. He, he says like, this is awesome. He was in the comments, throw some comments if you want on the videos. Anyways, uh, I gave him an error. <laughs> <laughs> so does everyone see the notation right here? Please take some notes on this. E is what is residual for the notation. <laughs> I'm getting some errors right now. Y, <laughs> my nickname's Beast, actually. So you, I don't know if that, is there some nickname for that? I'm glad you like it there, Catherine. Glad you like it. Healthcare is gonna be a new lot, you're right. <laughs> so I'm glad they're very helpful. I'm trying to do each top, each chapter. So Y is the actual, and let's look at the graphic right here. Please take a note. I've drawn everything out right here. So this, these are Burger King menu items. So these Burger King menu items would actually have this much fat. Does everyone see the Y value right here? The Y value is how much fat it actually has. Does everyone understand this? That this dot right here is how much fat. Maybe this is a, uh, what does Burger King have? This is a, a double burger right here, a, a double Whopper. Sure, why not? So with this right here, we have how much fat it actually has. And then up here we have it's what. This is how much fat the burger was what to have. This value right here is how much fat the burger was what to have. So if you look across here, <laughs> I know that reference, David, number 10 <laughs> predicted. That is how much it was predicted to have. That's, that's all the way down here. It doesn't have any uh, protein or fat in it. So that's where that's at, David. So this is uh, how much it was predicted to have and we would solve for that using its X value. You bot, calm down there. And then if you notice, this point is below the line making its residual what? Any point that is below the line, like if its actual is below the predicted, if its actual is below the predicted, then its residual is negative. If its actual is above the predicted, then its residual would be what? If its actual is above the predicted, here's the line of prediction, it'd be positive. If it's on the line and we perfectly predict it, its residual will be what? If it's on the line, its residual will be what? Zero, nice job there, Ian. Great review, Vols help Vols. Awesome stuff, great job in the chat right there. Hopefully everyone's having fun with nice some people. Whose birthday is it, Mubot? Shake up of the leader, purple hamster. Yes, purple hamster for the win. Sorry, everyone else. What percent of track runners are expected to run a time of 290 or higher? We're about to see some normal curve stuff. So you can see right here, 290 is right here. That's your big hint. This is where 290 is at. I'll be drawing this out here in one moment. Ah, no, sorry. I was making sure I was ready to take a picture of it and then I blocked it. So 
290 is right here. That's a Z score of negative two. And so the Z score of negative two is going to be a big help for solving this question. Great job. And so you might have guessed it. You might have been able to guess it decently by looking at the bigger numbers. If I was looking at this question, I'd probably guess pretty quickly by looking at it. And we've got some harder questions coming up here in a moment. So many Word documents. So when you look at this, 290 is at a z-score of negative 2, right? So what would we do? The first thing I'm going to draw below this, who can tell people in the chat, Brian's putting the what numbers below this. Brian's putting the what numbers below this. Uh, there's two answers to it. I'm drawing the blank curve. So <laughs> you got to make sure you say quote to it. The z-scores, these are all the z-scores, which are the standard normal curve. So these are all the z-scores. Excellent work. And then we'd have here 68, maybe a question coming up later, 95, 99.7. And now if we look at above two, we have 95 in here, right? Like this is 95% of the data inside of two and negative two. That's where 95% of the data is. But think about this. What is total outside of this? What is total outside of this? What is the total amount of area outside of this? And I do have a help video up for that, Brock. Office hours today, five. Great job there, Andrew. So since it's five total outside, 95 inside, five outside, 2.5 on either side. Oh my gosh, that's horrible. So right here, this is how we get the 97.5. And if you're working on chapter eight, I do have a help video office hours today, go over chapter eight. We go over all the questions. So make sure to check out the office hours for today for help with chapter eight. A lot of times I do as many things as I can in office hours to help out all the classes. And today we focused in on uh, 201 a good bit. So we figured out the answer here. <sighs> this is a close game, everyone. This is super close. And Silly Alpaca, amazing job. What percent of area on the graphic is shaded according to the empirical rule? Ooh, this is gonna be a tough one. I made this one really, it's not super tough, but slow down. I love the silence on it. Oh, we only have like four answers. So let's think about this for a moment. We're shading from zero to two. Do you remember what was between negative two and two? Do you remember what was between negative two and two? 68, 95. It's almost like we need to take 95 and take what of it? Who can explain? We, we didn't trick that many people, but a lot, of people, a lot of people didn't answer. We need to take, what's the answer right here? Oh, that's a great way right there. Great job, Ian. You could just subtract off this 2.5 off the side of it or half of 95. So uh, this was a pretty tricky one. Or Ricky right there has the parts of it. This is worth 34 and this is worth 13.5. As long as you get one answer, yep. And then Gigi did it with the remaining parts subtracted out. Amazing. I'm really proud of everyone here. Um, great job. Those are so many ways to answer this question. And the way I thought up, which is just one of the many ways people are showing, is if you have this graphic right now, which we can basically use the same graphic, you're looking at on this graphic, let's just shade it right here. You're looking at between zero and negative two or positive two, doesn't matter which way. And so we're looking at just this, but this would be 95. So we're just gonna cut it in half. Does that make sense to everybody? That's the way I thought of right here. But a lot of people are saying things like, wait, above here is 50% and outside of here is 2.5. So since this is 50%, you could just subtract off this area and that would give you the remaining area right here. So kind of a good way. If you can confirm your answer multiple ways, you know you got it. So great job. The test doesn't care if your answer first. Yeah, <laughs> there's, no, I shouldn't joke. I was gonna say there's bonus points if you answer first. Like we look at, no, there, there's there's no, you could you could take all 90 minutes and get everything right and get 100. So don't worry about that, uh, William right there. Great job. And I think you're commenting on that also. Um, you don't have to show your work. No work shown. Let's see who's gonna win. We might have lost some, oh my, purple hamster. Silly alpaca is just destroying it though. Um, do we have to know that it's 2.35 or is it 2.5? Uh, just so I can show you really briefly here before we do the next question. Um, oh, I can do it even better than this. Let me go grab the graphic of it real quick. Uh, two seconds. 
So let me grab the graphic that shows it. It's going to be easier than me drawing it and it'll look clearer. Um, so this graphic right here, two seconds. Okay, I got it. Oh, I'm going to take it now. Okay, so I'm going to take a picture of this and bring it over here and let you see all the percentages. 2.5 is above uh, 2. So above 2 is 2.5% of the area. But that's because the area above 2 or between 2 and 3 is 2.35 and the area above 3 is 0.15. Oh, you can't see it on the screen now. No, you can't see it, I think, right? Sorry, I've got the other screen up. But this is the curve completely broken down right here. Everything you'd need to see. Um, ah, now I wish, I wish Patrick, we don't have it set that way. That's a good idea. We, I, I'll talk to Terry. I was mentioning the ideas. You'll be able to see your scores when you finish the exam 100%. You won't see, be able to see what you got wrong, but you will be able to see your scores. But this is the curve completely broken down right here with all the numbers. And it's kind of a good, if you want to take a good screenshot of this, it's available online. But that is the curve broken down with all the numbers, 0.15, 2.35, 13.5, 34. And so there we go. Andrew, amazing notes, Andrew. Great job. Vols help Vols. We're doing some great review. Let's see who's going to win. It's going to be like three more, four more questions. A stat to one test is normally distributed with a mean of 75 and a standard deviation of five. What percent of students make above a 70? So there we go. I was like, where's it starting? So you need to draw this one out right here. It has a mean of 75 with a standard deviation of five. A mean of 75 with a standard deviation of five, and we're looking for above a 70. Above a 70. So when you think about above a 70, can you come up with the Z-score for that? Who can put the Z-score in the chat right now? You can put the Z-score. Think about what the Z-score is for 70 on this curve. So the Z-score is the observation minus the mean. So the observation is 70 minus 75. There we go. Negative five over five is negative one. So we know what the Z-score is. Now that we know what the z-score is, we should think 68 is between negative 1 and 1. So now we just do the outside. Great job right there, everybody. It's such a great review tonight. It went excellently. So many people here. Halfway. So we will we will do it. I, I promise there will be. I'll go back to short hair, Brian, after the mullet. Great work. Really good work on this right here. Uh, just so people can see the answer, maybe there were some guesses, um, or maybe everyone got it. Uh, we're going to use the same graphic right here. We're going to use the same sort of idea. I'm going to vanish. Let's see right here. Where's the vanish button? No tiny brown yet. Okay, let's do this. So the way we do this right here is we write in on this curve. Well, it's got other numbers on it. Yeah, we can put the We can put our numbers below it. You can do it with the z-scores and let's go right here and let's put in uh sure we'll put both sets of numbers okay let's do it both sets of numbers there we go so we have here zero one two and three negative one negative two negative three and then we put here 75 70. that's really all we need because oh thank you everyone for the likes that's awesome and then what percent of area is between here and here? What percent of area is between the two horribly drawn arrows? What percent of area is that? 68, classic. And then outside of this would be 32 total. You just subtract from 100. And so that makes this 16 and this 16. And then we just trace along here to figure out the total. And you'll notice that if you were to add up these, you would get 68. You could also do 16 from 100, but the total on that curve is now 84%. Uh, nice job, Samantha. Excellent work. It is, of course, as everyone knows, Mega Mondays. I'm off center right here. So Mega Mondays, let's do this with the next question. Let's go back right here. Time to do the next question. Purple hamster still in the lead. So old second to the lead. Oh my gosh, that's a close right there. It sounds like Randy Savage. Oh my God, it's a close game. <laughs> Let's do this. Next question, 68.95. Everyone should know this instantaneously. This is how quick can you go? How quick can you answer this question? 68.95, let's go. 100 likes, is it possible? 68, 95, 99.7. So close. Oh, wait. <laughs> I just said the answer. <laughs> 68, 95, and then I don't know the last number. 
68. I actually made a mistake one day. I said 68.95 and I said like 99.5 or something. Um, oh, that's fine. We can handle one dislike. Oh, it's 99.7. Is it, is it 003? I think is it, oh my gosh, why don't I know the extra decimal? Um, it's 68.26, 95.449, 99.73. It is 99.73, isn't it? Andrew, I think you're right. Great job, Andrew, right there. Excellent work. Andrew's right with 99.73. Pretty sure Andrew's got the correct stuff. <sighs> Andrew was right. I got an error. Man, I'm making so many errors. But everyone knows no one made an error on this question with 68.95, the percent vary underneath the curve as you go out further. Two questions to go. Who's in the lead? Purple Hamster battling it out with Silly Alpaca. Really close game. The top four are really close. True or false? Outliers can make a weak correlation strong. Outliers can make the slope of a negative correlation negative line positive. Thank you, everyone, for the likes on the video. It's really appreciated. I really appreciate it. If you know something, outliers can do something. Outliers can do something. Outliers can do a lot of things. Outliers with outliers, they're on a boat. And outliers have a saying. Outliers are saying to you that anything is possible. If you think your video can get 100 likes, anything is possible. With outliers, this video is the outlier here, especially on this channel with 100 likes. Yep. It's very, very true. It can make a weak correlation strong. Outliers can make a weak correlation strong. Outliers can make the slope of a negative line positive. <laughs> Andrew gets the reference. Anything is possible. Outliers can do anything. Go watch some. <laughs> outliers can do anything. So remember this. Can an outlier make a positive correlation negative? Can an outlier make a negative correlation positive? Oh, it will happen. I promise you that. We just have to wait past Halloween. Is Halloween plans. No going out Halloween plans, but you know, like, yeah, where's me? He's here for the he's here for the ending ceremony. He's gonna he gets to do the prize prizes. One <laughs> the one dislike. <laughs> the one dislike is the last place. Oh no. We still have a hundred people playing. Sometimes people drop off in mid Kahoot. Mega Brian, he's gone for the day. But the last co Purple Hamster! <laughs> no. <laughs> oh my god. Where's the sad music? I'm even confused. That really makes me sad. All game. All game. Purple hamster. Rip purple hamster. Mewbot is even, Mewbot's even joining in. Man. Okay. As long as everyone's doing okay. Is everyone all right to go to the last question? Should we just call the game right here? Should we just quit the game? Should we soft lock the video game? Like the Kahoot soft lock and it's like, oh, too bad. We can't finish the Kahoot. Pur Polar hamster's gone. Speed run over. No more. Let's <laughs> okay, we're doing this. Sorry, purple hamster. We're doing this in memory of purple hamster right here. Never forget purple hamster. Predicting index of 30 for either company would be an extrapolation of the model. So if we predicted at 30, that'd be an extrapolation. Last quick question here. Here we go. Predicting 30 would be an extrapolation of the model. Hint, I don't see 30 on this x-axis. When you extrapolate, you are predicting outside the x bounds of the model. So what is it? Is an extrapolation? Is this? You bet it is. Extrapolating is predicting outside the X bounds of the model. You know it's an extrapolation when you're outside the X bounds. Now, companies often forecast for the future. That's called forecasting. You have to do it in time series. Uh, you can also extrapolate on the low side of the model. With that said, we're going to find out the winners here. But I promised Tony Brown would be back. I'm Tony Brown! My voice is way too high. Okay, there we go. Okay. Brian was messed with my voice. Okay, wait. Okay, that's the echo. There we go. There we go. This is Tiny Brian's voice. What did Brian do to my voice? Okay, Tiny Brian's here. Let's talk about the winners. I don't care about Purple Hamster. I'm not sad. Let's do this. Third place is gonna be Legend Lion. I don't even know if we saw them all game. Great job, Legend Lion. Second place is Winged Wallaby. And first place is... This is you, Silly Alpaca. Great job. Make sure to email me. If you won, make sure to email me. Send me a screenshot of your Kahoot. I mean, send it to Brian. He, he does all that stuff. 
Brian, you back? You back, Brian? Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Brian. Good job, Ty. Wait. Oh. Good job, Ty, Brian. Hit the wrong button right there. <laughs> All right, good job, everybody. Amazing work. We've got lots of videos up. I'm gonna drop some videos in the chat right quick. So let me, uh, I'm gonna put some links to some playlists that I would suggest watching. Uh, I made a new playlist. It's got a bunch of review videos. And thank you everyone for really such a great Kahoot. Lots of fun. Um, if you do great on the test and you think it's because of the Kahoot, definitely let me know. Um, I've had people tell me the Kahoots are very helpful. If the cute Kahoot didn't help you, tell me that too. And I'll be like, I'll try to make them more helpful. Hey, Here we go. Here's the link in the chat to basically everything. And you're welcome. Thank you, Chelsea. Thank you to Delaney. Thank you, Nathaniel. You're welcome, Samantha. Thank you, Haley. We'll hop back here to space real quick. Let me say by the way. Yeah, this, we are back here in space. Let off here in a moment. You're welcome, Meryl. You're welcome, Victoria. Uh, this video, since we went under two hours, will be uploaded right away. So you can view this video afterwards. So you can view this video afterwards. Thank you, Jacob right there, and Alexander, and Alexandra. You're welcome, Nikita. So, and T-Bondi, great job, Spencer, everybody. Ashley, great work. So hopefully everyone had some fun, a good review tonight. And you too, Patrick, have a great day. Oh yeah, wait, what's your name in, in Pokemon Go? I can't remember. Sorry, I just, I don't play new. Okay, got it. Cool. I'll, I'll go down. I will do that. Sorry about that. <laughs> You're welcome, Kylie. Great job, everybody. Good review. We'll head off here in just a second. You know what we should do? I can't, I don't know if I have that video up. Should we, here we'll play an end video. Wait, which version of Pokemon is your favorite, red or blue? Uh, you know, it's, it's not a big deal which either one you play because they both basically just have, I guess they have different Pokemon because they didn't both have the 151, but um, I don't know. I can't remember. It's so long ago now, like to think about playing red versus red or blue. And I would say, I, I if I say one, I'm just saying one. I can seriously not remember. Is there another Kahoot? This is it. This was the last Kahoot of the day. I'm so sorry. See you later, Andrew. You're welcome, Harrison. Got present open right here. True question. The answer is yellow because <laughs> you got a Pikachu walking around with you. It's, I think the last ones I pay, played, I played some of black and white. I didn't play sun and moon. Um, then black and white too. I think I played black and white. I didn't play sun and moon though. Yours was blue. Oh, I, I used emulator. I used emulator when I played those. I played those on my PC downstairs and I played them on emulator. But great job, everybody. We will end with a fun video here. Let's think. What video do we have? I think what we have. Let's end with some hype video. <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Is there, uh, unless the exam goes poorly. So I doubt it'll be curved. I'm hoping we get some great grades. Um, definitely. I might even do a survey of individuals to ask them questions like how many hours did you watch the class or these things? Cause I want to point students in the right direction and be like, I, I believe watching class helps. I truly believe that. And being in class, taking notes, uh, doing the assignments, I'm, I'm just saying the things you would expect with a class, but I really believe if you're in class, you're taking notes, it's going to help you a lot more. And then you study less for the test and you're more prepared. And when you're studying, you're studying, you're reviewing, but I think that's got it. Oh, I'm glad it's fun. Victoria right there. That's my goal. I want class to be fun and then for us to learn. But with that, it's time for the shattered opening here. So let's hop over here. I'm going to change it back to stats will one and just shattered. No shattered opening has Marvel on it. So we can't play that one. Oh, let's end with a really happy thing right here. So I'm going to end with some fun that we've always had. I'll talk to everybody later. Oh, good. Well, have fun. If you have questions, let me know. See you later. Good to see you, Roscoe and everybody. And Neil, good to see you guys. <sighs>